Hey guys, welcome back. This is part three of using MDT 2012 and capturing a multiple partition reference image so you could deploy it. So in part three, and actually in part two, I left you off um, real short and simple. And I'm gonna start in part three. I actually logged in into my reference image. If you guys were paying attention, up in the very top in part one and two, this is the reference image that I was using to capture my image. As you can see, I got a C drive and a D drive, okay? In my MDT server, if you go into my computer, my deployment share, and you go to captures, I have my C drive, right? And I have my D drive. Now, my D drive is pretty small because look at it. I don't even have that much in it. I just have a folder. That's all I have and a file, right? So I'm actually going to shut this off. I'm going to actually do a control delete and shut down this machine so it won't take too much of um, you know memory and so so in part three it's time to import your custom Im image and uh, tell the task sequence that you want to deploy your custom image and also push out your D drive to your machine so I actually did that already I'm just gonna show you what I actually did so uh, Again, you go to right click on your task sequence node, create a new task sequence, give it a name. We're gonna just write gibberish because I'm not actually gonna save it. You want to stand the client task. Okay, let me just uh, close this right here. Cool. Uh, hit next. Pick your WIM image that you imported. So, actually, let me cancel this. Cancel this. And you're gonna go to operating systems. I right click, I import operating system, go to custom image files, go to next, go to that location where your capture image file is. Now you only want the biggest file, you don't want the D drive, okay? So I pick my my biggest file, which is basically the operating system, hit open, hit next, hit next. Uh, I gave it a specific name, give it a summary. And I'm actually gonna stop this because I don't want that to happen because I already did it. And hit finish. So once you're done, you're good to go. Now it's time to create your task sequence. You right click on your task sequence node, uh, go to new task sequence, give it a name, give it ID, whatever you want, description, go to next. Uh, standard client task sequence is what you want. Hit next. Pick your captured image, which is this, that's the name that I gave it. I gave it uh, multiple partition capture in OS. Hit next. Specify a key. Give all this information if you want. I'm just gonna get gibberish. Give it a an admin. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna skip this. Hit next. Hit next, and it will go do it its thing. Right now, now it's time to tell your task sequence that you want that D drive to be deployed. So you actually gotta do two things. So let's go inside my deploy multiple partition OS. That's the task sequence that I created. Go to your task sequence. Now, the first thing you want to do, you want to go inside your format and partition disk task sequence, which is located in your pre-install, new computer only, and format partition. Now, by default, you're going to have your OS disk primary 100%. Now, you actually want to go and edit that. You want to give it a small amount, but you want to give it enough amount that your... Um, operating system has enough information uh, to store in plus you have enough space to install your applications and stuff so I gave it 75% because again this is only a testing environment a virtual machine so hey good leave everything as is now what you want to do the other 25% I had to use it for my D drive so I basically created a new I created that I hit that little star I gave a partition name the partition name I get it just D right uh, I, I specify the percentage for my case it was 25% and then the variable you have to give it a variable now the variable that I gave for my D drive I made it real simple for my for myself and the variable was D drive now you really need to uh, keep note of this because you're gonna be using this shortly now once you've done that you press OK now the next step that you want to do is within your install node of your task sequence right underneath install operating system you want to create a run command line give it a name whatever you want I actually call it D drive and this is the command line that you want to give it 
Now open quotation percent sign deploy root percent sign backslash tools x64 backslash image image x close quotation right space forward slash apply space open quotations percent side deploy root percent sign and backslash operating systems backslash d drive backslash d drive dot when close parentheses I mean actually close quotation sorry guys uh, space one and then you have to give the variable now what what's happening now I didn't import my D drive partition what I did is I did a copy so I actually went into my deployment share right deployment share I went to my operating systems I created this folder manually D underscore drive and I copied and paste my D drive win file got it so this is what this is right here now remember that variable that I told you guys to keep note you actually got to tell the task sequence that you want to use this win file for that partition that you created on this step right here right awesome so once you hit apply okay it you're basically done I'm gonna update my my deployment share like so awesome and I'm actually gonna create a virtual machine create a virtual machine uh, don't want no this hit continue it is a Windows 7 I want like a PC hit continue uh, let's I'm gonna tell it to drop it in here and let's let's call it Windows 7 I'm just gonna call it Windows 7 hit uh, customize before installing actually you don't customize anything I'm, I'm probably gonna leave it the way it is I'm just gonna leave it the way it is I'm gonna close it close it and then I'm gonna hit continue now because I hit continue I need to pixie boot into my virtual machine there you go let me get into my virtual machine there you go and uh, I'm gonna do a 64 bit and I'm actually pixie booting into my network to get into my MDT 2012 server to pick the task sequence that I want and deploy my image now a lot of people uh, you know I, I've actually created early episodes of how to get, configure your WDS to pixie boot with your MDT so check those episodes out um, so right now I'm waiting to get into my environment I'm about to I choose the task and I'm, I'm probably gonna cut you guys off once I to choose the task and it goes through with no problem and then in part four uh, I show you how everything is up and running and let's let's cross the figures and hopefully everything works out so big waiting uh, I was actually given this task a while back but it's not like I was putting it off just I just had so much in my plate that I had to take care of before I even even start doing MDT it's like uh, MDT 2012 is being used in a lot of organizations now nowadays it's 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 pretty crazy how much people are using MDT 2012 in their environment now you know you know you still have SCCM you know system center configuration manager which does the same thing as MDT 2012 but again it's it's SCCM is like in steroids you know it's like ultimate you can basically do a lot of things with it MDT 2012 it's free it's a free download you don't have to do much all you have to do is have a licensed server and to get it up and running uh, so I, I think that's why a lot of people are actually moving towards MDT 2012 because again it's free it's not that hard to set up again I'm gonna say it again uh, you, you do need a server a licensed server to have this up and running plus you also need it to be part of your domain uh, because I don't really think it would work if you don't have your machine on the domain that's a good question I don't know I've never tried that hopefully if, uh, I'm wondering if anyone out there actually use MDT 2012 without being part of a domain that's kind of interesting uh, if you guys actually experience that or if that's possible 
hey, let me know. You know, sh shoot me an email or shoot me a comic. I would like to know that. You know. Uh, so right now it's gonna prompt me f to authenticate so I could connect to my share. Again, I didn't really do too much customization on my thing because you know, this is a testing environment, and uh, as you can see, most likely you guys will not have this, but I haven't customized my uh, my custom settings i9 file to automate all this so I just don't have time so I just have it like this get into that hopefully I can connect and uh, give it a sec give it a sec again I'm running everything on a virtual machine parallels believe it or not uh, for those that have been following me at the very beginning, and you know, I used to use a PC, you know, I used to use VMware, uh, but I had to change that. So, okay, capture and deploy, that's what we want. Awesome, hit next. Computer detail, uh, let's just give it Windows 7 as the name. Awesome. How about, uh, how about this? Let's go to. Uh, uh, video request because this is what it is. It's a video request. Awesome. So I'm gonna hit next. Uh, I don't need to move that. No. Again, all this stuff is popping up because I didn't customize my custom settings ini file. So I gotta do all this gibberish stuff. Uh, no applications. I don't need to capture. Hit next and begin. So. It's going to take a while for all this to work. So I'm going to leave you guys off. And uh, again, check out part four. This is part three. And there's going to be another part four of this video request. And I'll catch you guys later. Thank you.